Welcome back everybody to my third video. So today we're going to be looking a little bit at Ellers and Clark's model for PTSD. So today I want to talk a little bit about prior beliefs. Um, so I've just made up an example. Uh, we'll call him Rick for today. Um, and we'll be looking at what kind of beliefs make up a, a kind of healthy functional person. So beliefs are broken down into three different types. Beliefs about the self, beliefs about others, and beliefs about the world around us. And a recent study found that the areas that change the most during trauma are beliefs around safety, trust, power, esteem, and intimacy. One important belief is what we think of the world and how safe it is. So the study that I looked at was looking at trauma in uh, veterans. So it's a very specific type, um, but a very important belief that can be impacted by trauma is how safe the world is. So for Rick, we're going to say that he had a very normal and safe upbringing and he believes that the world is safe and fair. So another set of beliefs are beliefs around others and a common belief is that others are nice or helpful um, and what we look at here is how PTSD can change that. So we look at two areas, trust and intimacy. So a belief that Rick would have is that people are in general um, positive and that they're helpful and can be trusted and relied on and an intimacy that it's safe to let people in. So the belief there is that others are safe and helpful and that it's safe to let people in. Believing that the world is safe or dangerous has a big impact on how we feel we can change things for the better. So a common thing that can change in PTSD is um, the idea that we, we have power to change our surroundings. So this fits in with locus of control, uh, another psychological theory. Um, so a person might go from believing that they can control the things around them um, and that they can, um, and that the the world is is predictable enough for us to make a change. Another common belief is around worth. When someone gets praise and they see themselves making friends and having close relationships, they start to see themselves as having worth over time. This can quickly change after a traumatic event. So a person might then suddenly see themselves as bad or evil or worthless. So this is a really important area to look at, especially when thinking about trauma. So all these beliefs are really important. They add up to Rick's ability to function in the world. Now these beliefs might differ from place to place or country to country because in the modern world you might need a different set of beliefs to function and survive than you might need in the third world. So what we have here is someone, so in this instance Rick, who's doing well in the world, but the problem comes when a traumatic event shakes up all these ideas. So the belief that the world is fair could be quickly shaken when someone gets something horrible in their life that they don't feel they deserve. So unfortunately Rick then has a car crash and this changes everything. His beliefs around safety, his ability to trust other people on the road and his sense of ability to control and change the things around him. Now for the first month this is expected as, as people readjust to a traumatic event. But after a month it changes from an acute stress reaction to PTSD. And what I'm going to do is explain how that happens. 
So in PTSD, several things can happen to the memory itself. So because it's such a shocking event, our brains don't process things in the same way. They take snapshots of what's going on around and they take in vivid sensory information. Now, this can come back in flashbacks later on and can make the person feel like what happened back then is happening again. It can also be triggered by things unconsciously. So for instance, the shadow of a person could cause a flashback and the person experiencing this wouldn't have known that that had caused the flashback. Another important part of the model is appraisals. So Ellers and Clark suggest there are two processes that beliefs go through when trying to appraise new information that is traumatic. And this is accommodation and assimilation. So I'm going to be going through this in another follow-up video and going into a lot more detail. But for today, I just want to explain one example and see how this fits in with the model. So one example of accommodation and assimilation here with Rick could be that if if the trauma itself was about sudden change from safe to dangerous so let's say that Rick was stationary uh, coming up to a junction and a car ran into the back of him now for Rick what he observed was being completely safe and then all of a sudden the car being raised and him going across the road in this situation, his belief about safety in the world could completely change. So it could change to the world is completely dangerous, which is over accommodation. Or he could use assimilation. So this is where he would say the world is still safe, but the reason things went wrong is because he wasn't aware enough. Now this can have detrimental effects on his life because then he might start becoming uh, vigilant to everything around him and have to and feel like he has to constantly be watching out for things so if Rick has stopped believing in him in his ability to keep himself safe and his ability to change the future and and change the things around him he might be starting to get a current sense of threat We've also got these vivid images coming back from the event itself and these will feel like they're happening in, in, in the moment. So we've got all these things adding up to a current sense of threat. So the last box looks at what is done as a behavior. So if what you believe has been shaken up and you change that very quickly, you're going to be acting in different ways. And also, if the memory is so um, threatening and scary, it's also going to motivate you in different ways. So what we might find, so in this case, where the belief has changed, we might find that th the person, so Rick, starts to become hypervigilant of everything he does, looking out for threat in all places, stops driving, and tries to avoid any trigger that might bring back the memory. Unfortunately, when this happens, we find that the avoidance itself maintains the state of memory and the appraisals. So what needs to happen is the memory needs to be processed and the appraisals need to be challenged. So if they are not revisited and explored fully, then it maintains the very nature of the memory that makes it scary and the appraisals that make the world seem more scary or make the person doubt their own abilities. So hopefully that's helped you to piece together how Ellers and Clark treat PTSD. So um, they use this formulation to start to break down PTSD um, using interventions such as exposure, cognitive restructuring, uh, using hotspots from the trauma itself to help 
bring a therapeutic relief to strong emotions and thoughts. I will be building on this video with future videos um, explaining treatment, explaining what accommodation and a simulation are and explaining a little bit more about trauma memory and what's happening in the biology of someone who has PTSD.